All right, welcome back to English. Let's take a look at the last month of some uh, poorly translated signs and menus and and packaging. And which one is number 19? I think it's I think it's this one. What? Four stars. The telephone line is connected to the telephone and the voice is heard and the song is awake. And this is a verified purchase. I want to know what product this is for. That would be helpful. Helpful, not help. This was not helpful. You didn't tell me what product this is for. I wonder if it's for a phone. I don't know. It's almost like you, you know how sometimes there will be, I don't know if you've ever been on Twitter yourself, but occasionally people will do this thing where you just use the auto predictive text on your phone. You just keep tapping the first word that appears and you just see what sentence happens. It almost seems like that's what they did here. It's fun to do that sometimes. Goodbye for selling to us. Welcome for shopping with us. <laughs> That's Burlington Coat Factory is like a, a US based store too. Looks like someone might have just gotten their lines of text mixed up on the sign. Welcome for shopping with us. Good Goodbye for, for selling to, do people sell to? Is Burlington Coat Factory all about, is it like a reseller? I don't know how this works. Do people sell their coats and then they resell them? I've never been inside one, so I don't, I don't know any experts out there. Deformed car. Hey, we've seen you before on, uh, I think it was the, the crappy off-brand subreddit, the Transformers knockoff. It's literal. The car is very deformed from actually being a car, but I think transformed is the word you were looking for, but you've also probably seen this before. So, you know, it's cool. Perfect and smad it. I jub don't, don't care. I am beautiful. You got that at, at least. I am perfect. I am smad it. The irony is palpable. I mean, spelling isn't necessarily directly correlated to intelligence, but it certainly doesn't hurt to make a good impression on other people with your intelligence by spelling things correctly. So please do not finger the peaches. The irony of this is that you put a typo into the title of your post that isn't actually in the post itself. <laughs> the I, the, yeah, I was the only one who got that one. The irony being the misspelled post title. We got double Englished here, ladies and gentlemen. Please do not finger the peaches. That You know what? That it makes sense. Did you know also that in Japan, there is like this very, there's like this luxury fruit culture where you can get freaking like $200 watermelons and stuff like that. You can get just these crazy massive grapes that are crazy expensive and it's wild. I've seen YouTube videos on this and I kind of want to go myself, but it's just, it's bonkers. I just, I feel like I have to go and try it at some point. I was supposed to go to Japan last year. Now I have to reschedule the trip just so I can try some fruit because you know, you can't, you can't get that in the US, I, I feel like, cause you know, by the time it gets over here, it's perishable and so it wouldn't be as fresh as it would be out there. And you can get like square watermelons and stuff. Anyway, it's wild. You should look up Japanese expensive fruit on YouTube. Either this is cannibalism or a really good tip. Make eye contact while eating Ashley. As I was kind of glancing at it, I thought that it said something like Ashley while eating Ashley. Yep. I, I saw just, I thought it was something else at first and any, not a big deal. That's, that's all. Um, <laughs> how, does, <laughs> how does that even like, what did you mean to say? Make eye contact. Is it? It's it's more of a command. Yeah, Ashley, make eye contact while eating. Okay, we're your family, and we've noticed that your entire life you've never made contact with anyone else while eating. So we're gonna make this neon sign to inform you of your mistake. Okay, this is gonna be at the dinner table, and it's gonna remind you every time. This is like a regular to the restaurant. Probably is this Ashley here? And she's like a regular patron and the restaurant was like, you just never make eye contact with anyone. Please make eye contact. This is why commas are important, everybody. It's make eye contact while eating, comma, Ashley. Otherwise, it's cannibalism. Don't worry, I won't animals. Do not animals. <laughs> <laughs> commas are important as are words. When you miss certain words, it's 
It makes the meaning of things change. Do not, animals. It's telling the animals, just do not, right? Like the animals, it's instructing the animals, the animals like, you know what you're gonna do, animals. You know what you're trying to do, just do not do it, all right? Do not. Anyone interested in some delicious and tender ass? Ass muffins, ass ring donuts, Danish ass. What did you mean for it to say? Can I comment though? Those pastries do look delicious. And you know what? If that's what an ass muffin or an ass donut looks like, then it looks like it tastes really good. But what is it actually supposed to be? <laughs> Danish ass, I'm listening. <laughs> But what did it, uh, oh, ass is simply short for assorted. God, I'm an idiot. Assorted muffins, assorted don't, oh my God. Danish assorted. Why didn't you put the assorted in the beginning like everyone else though? I feel so dumb because I've definitely seen that at grocery stores before. That's not even a translation fail. That's just, just like commas are important and words are important. Putting a period after an abbreviated word is also important. Ass dot muffins, I actually probably would have figured it out. But the Danish ass over here really threw me off. All right. <laughs> Seems a bit harsh. All shoplifter will be executed. I, I don't know. Maybe wherever this is, that is the actual punishment for shoplifting. They took the cutting off the hands thing and they took it another step further. And we're just like, you know what? Rather than cutting off the hands, why don't we just do the head instead? All shoplifter will be executed, you know? That will take care of it. They will never shoplift again after that. Don't take me seriously. I don't mean it. That's a pretty... I don't think the punishment quite fits the crime in that case. Just for the fork of it. Regularly reduce weight. Unnecessarily go on a diet. Hmm. Yeah, you, you got it right. I don't, I don't get it. What do you mean? And then I suppose maybe it's saying that if you regularly reduce your weight, then it would be unnecessary to go on a diet, which makes sense to be fair. Right. And then there's also just what is what do you have to do with anything? Why do you have that look? Can I just say the problem with diets, though, is that at the end of it, if the diet has a termination point, your body exists in a consistent state of equilibrium. And therefore, when you go back to whatever you were eating before, you're just gonna end up where you were at previously. So it has to be permanent lifestyle change. I know that had nothing to do with what's going on, but diets were brought up. Should I be worried? Fried Jew's ear. Huh. Well, I, what is, I wonder what it's supposed to be. How do you mistake that translation? I, <laughs> I just don't know. Jew's ear is a real name of a mushroom. Ha! Huh. Auricularia auricula jude, known as the Jew's ear, is a species of edible fungus found worldwide. Today I learned. No typo. I was like, that doesn't seem like something you can typo very easily. It's just straight up, that's the name of it. I wonder where it got that name. Do Jewish people have a very particularly shaped ear bizarre spotted on a bus in japan the emergency cock <laughs> i've i've felt very deprived for the past however many months okay it's you know I've, i'm fed up here give it to me uh, fine i i'm caving in i'll take it just this once it is an emergency it's been far too long and you know what that's Thank you, bus, for providing this. <laughs> what was that translated from? Like, how do you get cock instead of, I don't know, button or even pusher or something like that would just be, would be better. When you try your best, but don't succeed. Se habla espanol, we speak Russian. Nice try, I'm not convinced quite yet. Hmm, da, uh, privet. Uh, spasiba. That's my, that's the extent of my Russian. What was that? Yes. Uh, welcome and thank you. I, pr I think. Maybe. Oh, and of course, Asuka. Who doesn't know that one, though? If you play video games, that's like obligatory. This restaurant survey is interesting. The taste and quality of your food was 
very likely, somewhat likely, not likely, not at all likely. You know what, this could make sense though. It's all a matter of expectations, right? If you went into the restaurant and you didn't have high expectations, then you say not at all likely. Wow, that food turned out really good. It was not very likely that it was gonna be that good. So really, it's just a, another way to phrase things here and it makes complete sense. I don't know. I like the different approach. You gotta vary up the questions to keep things interesting because these surveys, they can be a little bit monotonous sometimes. Mmm, love me some scrambled eggs. Hey, you know what, in fairness, we've had a few typos in titles of posts here. So, yeah. Uh, but scram scrambled's not a big deal, but pineapple salad. I prefer to stay away from pain when I'm eating, if at all possible. And chicken new dills soup. At least, you know, it gets the point across. I don't think I've ever had a pineapple salad before. What is your impression? On pineapple salad. You got a little bit of a, it's a controversial topic, the whole pineapple on pizza, which is weird. I don't know why it's more recently become a controversial topic when Hawaiian pizza has been around for ages, but it's only recently become a meme. But what's your opinion on pineapple in salad or pineapple in salad? Because that's not commonly used either. Do you support? Are you against? I don't think I've tried before, so I can't really comment. But maybe you have pineapple. Does it work on salad? Um, what? People are eating children in this area. Please leash up your dog and clean after them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The people who are eating the children, okay, they don't have to clean up after themselves. But if you have a dog, all right, then you're on the hook too. When your dog poops, you also have to clean up the, ch the child parts that are scattered around. You're obligated to do that. The people who are eating children take priority here. We don't want to put them out. We're terrified of them then eating us. So we don't want to ask them to clean up, but you are on the hook if, if you have a dog. This is actually, we've moved into the Attack on Titan universe here. These, there are Titans in this park and please clean up after them. Playing with fire, grilled sexual harassment. <laughs> oh God, the top comment. Hollywood actors favorite treat. Woo, buddy. That's a, that's a comment right there. It's, I was honestly, the, my first thought was, yeah, this relates to a lot of the news stories these days. And then there we go with that comment. Grilled sex, where did, is that a food? Is it a food that was mistranslated or was the grilled added in front of sexual harassment for, and why is it on a plaque? When have you ever seen a plaque anywhere that just says sexual harassment on it? I don't get it. I don't understand. Why does this plaque exist? I, I have so many questions. Sexist? Female? Mankind. I guess it kind of, you get the idea, right? But I suppose that also implies that, you know, women are part of mankind. Mankind is an all-encompassing term, but is the term itself the sexist term? Because in instead of saying man and womankind, mankind kind of just encompasses everyone. This is a philosophical debate that we have on our hands here. Because so I suppose women could go into either one, but you know, because you're kind of, it's, I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, finally found one. Soup for sluts. Damn, that's real aggressive. Where did you, where did you get that? Oh, wow, hold on. Nope, nope, nope. Co top comment says that this is intentional and not English. And that's just straight up the brand of this particular ramen. You know, when you think about it, it is a good marketing strategy because you're gonna see that on the shelf and you're gonna be like, Jesus Christ, what is this? Is this real? And then you're gonna take a picture of it, exactly. Post it on social media. It's gonna get number one on the English section on Reddit. It's gonna give that brand a whole lot more promotion. You're gonna post it on Twitter and Facebook and all your social media on Instagram as well. Your friends are gonna see it. They're gonna talk about it. They're gonna spread it to their friends. And then soon enough, before you know it, this is gonna be a, a, an instantly recognizable brand worldwide. I don't know how many people will actually follow through and buy it given the name, but some will. Even if a tenth of a percent of the people who see it end up deciding they want to purchase it and try soup for sluts, which, I mean, cups of ramen, how bad could it really be? It's hard to mess that up, right? So, great idea. Bravo on your marketing strategy there. It's, it's, 
It's good. Well, anyway, that was the last month of English. I hope you've enjoyed. Make sure to like if you like. Check out the playlist in the description if you want to catch up on more Reddit-related videos. Subscribe if you're not already, and if you want to listen to the music playing in the background right now, it's linked to the outro over on the Mayor Music channel. And that's it. I'll see you next time. Yeah.